I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus. May God speak to you in this sermon and may you experience the goodness of the Lord in your life. We are busy with a series called A Church Close to the Heart of God. This is based on Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Today's topic is compassion outside your circle. And Ian Dubery will be speaking on 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and the mystery of a godly life. Born low leads us to place and worship. We would like to remind you that God is using His church to care. Don't be alone. Speak to someone. Dial 073-573-4869 if you need to talk to someone. You may also have specific needs in healing and counseling. Feel free to contact the Moraleta Wholeness Center at 012-997-8035. Let us continue to support God's work through our local congregation. The information for bringing tithings and offerings are being given on the screen now. You may also contribute towards the SOS fund through which food parcels are being distributed. Thank you for your kindness and compassion. Today at 10 o'clock on our YouTube channel, we will also have an exciting session for the Revolution Kids by Anzal Hienes. The theme today is, don't worry, rather focus on God's kingdom. Also remember to pray along on WhatsApp on Tuesday evenings between 6 and 7. God says that if we acknowledge Him in all we do, He will allow us to take the right path. Here are some further announcements. Ben Obereku is recovering now from his operation and Christoph Freilung's condition is also now improving. Let us keep on praying for them. Uh, let us also pray for godly wisdom for the planning and decisions the church needs to do. Come, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we approach your throne with deep respect for your holiness. Thank you for all the privileges that we have. Thank you for your love and care. We intercede for everyone that is experiencing illnesses and distress in this time. We pray for healing and restoration. We pray for your provision for the church and for your children to walk in your life. Bless us out of your word and receive our praises and thanksgiving through Jesus. Amen.
a battle, a war between death and life. There on the tree, the Lamb of God was crucified. He went on down to hell, he took back every Good day and welcome yet again at one of our M-Connect sermons. We are busy with a series on a church close to the heart of God. And today um, we are busy with the third sermon, um, which is about compassion for the outer circle or outside your circle. So um, to get to that point, I want to, to ask a question about um, how do one live a holy life? Why is it important to live a life of holiness or sanctification. So that is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, also regarding the scripture of 1 Thessalonians, um, the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. So let us pray. Lord, thank you that we know that through you, we are able to live a life of holiness. Thank you that you came to set the example for us so that we can live a life according to your will. Thank you, Lord, that we are there to please you through our being holy. And Lord, I pray that you will now open your word to us so, so that we will be able to understand what you want to tell us today so that how we live will be to your glory and your honor. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I want to turn your attention to the first book of Timothy, also chapter 3, verse 14 to 16. And there it's reasons for Paul's instructions. It says, Although I hope to come to, to you soon, I am writing you these instructions so that if I am delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. 
Beyond all question, the mystery from which true godliness springs is great. He appeared in the flesh, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, was taken up in glory. And it is with this as background that everything, because it's, Paul is talking about Jesus Christ here, through which we can live that godly life, that life of sanctification. So um, our scripture today is from the first book of Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 1 to 12. So um, it's, it's all about living to please God. And what is God's will? That we live a life of holiness. So just a little bit of background on the first book of Thessalonians. Um, Thessalonica was, was a town or a village that um, Paul, Paul started the church there. So he taught them everything that they ought to know of being a church close to God's heart. And then it became unsafe for Paul to remain there. So he fled. Um, and then after a while, he came back to the Thessalonians. And when he came back, he came to see that the people actually was living a good life, doing what they were supposed to do, but he expected more. And that is what this scripture part is all about. So um, he expected more because we can always give more. And why? Why did he expect more of, these, of this faith community of the Thessalonians? Because it also reflected on the outsiders, the people outside their circle. Will they, will they respect them? Will they come, come to know Christ through them? Will they be able to, through their lives of holiness, have an influence as example, as an example for those outside their circle? So when we read the scripture of the first book of Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 to 12, it says, as for other matters, something new now, brothers and sisters, we instructed you how to live in order to please God, as in fact you are living. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. It is God's will that you should be sanctified that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God, and that in this matter no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother, brother or sister. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins, as we told you and warned you before. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you His Holy Spirit. Now, about your love for one another, we do not need to write to you. For you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all of God's family throughout Macedonia. Yet, we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so more and more, and to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. Now in this part, it, it comes to light that people were telling the church of, of the Thessalonians that Jesus Christ will come and um, how, how will it be? When will they go to heaven? Um, when will the end of the earth be? When will the end of times be? So they started struggling with that no, no, notion of how to live. Maybe they should just stop doing what they're doing, um, stop their work, what they are doing as jobs, and just live their lives and um, 
wait for the end. And Paul comes and tells them, no, no, you must keep on doing what you're doing. So starting from this scripture, in the begin, beginning, it's like um, the fact that you, how, you, how you are living. And actually, it's translated with walking. So how does your walking look if, it's, if you are living a life according to please God, a holy life? How does one's walk look? Now, I'm reminded by um, Genesis 4 with Enoch's life, where it states that we don't know anything about Enoch's life except that he was the friend of God and he walked with God. And then suddenly he was not, for God took him. So he was one of the persons in the Bible that actually did not die um, because God took him. It's such a beautiful metaphor also, walking with God. We know that Adam and Eve walked with God in the Garden of Eden. So it's a true intimate relationship, walking with God. So to have a holy life, it means living, walking in relationship with God, knowing what is pleasing to Him and living your life accordingly. So God's will is that we live a life of holiness and that pleases Him. So, in fact, um, he always contrasts it with the, the opposite. So, what is the opposite of holiness? Is sin. It's immorality. It's taking away from that relationship, taking away from that walking with God, um, stealing from that. And um, immorality, we tend to, through the ages, um, make it something purely sexual. And it is sexually, sexually, it's immoral, marital, immorality regarding sex and everything that revolves around that is still included, but it's not the only thing. And people tend to make that the main focus. So it's not about giving up on being human. It is by becoming more through being human. Um, to state it in a different way, it's living a holy life. It's not stripping yourself of who you are, but it's, equip it's equipping yourself of who you ought to be. So it's not, um, people tend to think, if I have to have a relationship with God, if I have to become a Christian, a child of God, I must stop being what is important for me. And maybe that is immoral, an immoral part of your life. But in fact, it's actually saying that we are focusing on ourselves, making ourselves the gods that we worship. So it is actually just a selfish act. Everything that is selfish actually distance ourselves from our relationship with God. So, but the opposite is becoming holy through Jesus Christ that we saw in, in um, 1 Timothy 3.16. He is the one, the mystery of godliness, who embodies us through his Holy Spirit that resides in us, giving us the opportunity to can become more and more like him, to give us the opportunity to guide us in a life and a walking that resembles a godly life, a holy life. Then we've been, actually, we've been called to a holy life. Being called to a holy life isn't something just, it's, it's not a little thing. It's huge. God is calling you by your name, asking you, guiding you, telling you to live a godly life, a holy life, because he knows you are more than what you are in an immoral world with selfish um, ideas and thoughts. Our failure to comply with this actually displeases God because he can see the potential in each of us because he created us. So he knows to what, what our capabilities are. He knows to what intent we can live that holy life that he so desperately asks of us. But then um, if we fail that, we fail in pleasing God and actually our being here on earth is supposed to be 
pleasing God. And for that, we, we manage to receive the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then the commandment of love one another comes to the forefront here. Love one another is one of the great commandments. And how are we able to love one another? Because in the world, it's all about self-love. But here it's love one another. It's actually to share a love in walking that holy love love, walking that holy life with God. So um, Paul comes and tells the people of the Thessalonians that, that they actually have to do more than just ticking off the list of what they are supposed to do. It's, it's not just something that they read and they aspire to be. It's actually something that must embody it. You must embrace it and live it each day. So he tells the people, do more of it, even more. I expect even more of you. And then I ask myself the question, just for me, I, I love people. But can I love people more? And the answer is yes. Even though I think I love people to the extremes, I can still love them more. So when it comes to living a holy life, even there, I can live a more holy life. So it's always a thing we can aspire to for more. Because actually, when it's fulfilled, is when our relationship in God is fulfilled. At the end of times, when we are in heaven with him, in his um, presence all the time. So I told you now also at the end that people said, but what if the end of the times is tomorrow? So then they stopped working and just waited. And Paul said, no, you must continue to work. Earn your living. Show people the example of living a life that is righteous, living a life that is bold, but holiness and sanctified um, is, is the key words there. Martin Luther actually said, if the world should come to an end tomorrow, I would still plant that apple tree today. And that is what Paul tries to, to tell the people, that living your life to please God is not waiting for him. It's actually running to him, but taking everyone around you with you by being an example, by being respected. Because that is what he says, the outsiders, and so that you will not be dependent on anybody, but they will be, res but be respected. We must be dependent on Christ alone and not on people. So now, how do I show compassion for those outside my circle, living a life of holiness, by pleasing God? And now you might say, but how can I live a, a holy life? a life pleasing to God, if I don't even really know if God understands my immoral, selfish pain, my worldly struggles, my hurts. And then I want to turn, turn you to the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 14 to 16. And it says, Jesus, the great high priest, therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. 1 Timothy, as we started with 1 Timothy, we receive that holiness through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, we are able to live a life pleasing to God, to walk a holy life, and through that, be able to show compassion. 
because Jesus could show compassion towards us because he experienced the same difficulties, the same trauma, the same hurts, pain, and whatever struggles we, we may incur. He knows about everything because he endured that. And if he can show compassion towards me, a sinner, the fact that he can make me a sinner, a selfish person, into one that can live through the Holy Spirit and the guidance of the Holy Spirit that resides within me, into a compassionate person, it pleases God because you are doing more. And the more you do, the more passionately you can grow into living that holy life. Because for each thing you do that pleases God, I think it stirs up through the Holy Spirit in you just to do more and more. So even if today is your last day, continue living a holy life. Continue walking a holy life right up to the bitter end. Because that is only the beginning of a life with God. But it sets an example for those, those around you, for those outside your circle, for the outsiders. They respect you for living a life that they maybe struggle to do, that they maybe long to do, but do not have the courage to, to let go of their worldly things yet. So today I want to leave you with this. How do you live a life? that is pleasing to God. It's not by stripping yourself from who you are. It's not becoming someone else. It's by letting Jesus Christ live through you, through his Holy Spirit, making you become the person you ought to be, the person who God, when he created you, saw the potential of what you can do. The more you can do, the passionately you can love one another with the love of Jesus Christ, a love that reconciles, a love that redeems, a love that saves. So may you walk today a life of holiness in relationship with God. May Christ himself be the example for you to walk this life in honor and glory of our God. Let us pray. Lord, thank you that we know that through you we are able to live a holy life. And Lord, thank you that I know that it's not about becoming someone else, but it's becoming who you really intended us to be. And Lord, I know the world wants to sway our minds so that we we feel we, we are being robbed if we let go of worldly things. But in fact, Lord, when we leave those behind, we gain so much more with you and in you and through you. And thus, we want to take people with us, our close people, but also the people outside looking at us. Lord, thank you that we can show them the way by being an example of someone pleasing to God, living a holy life. Lord, I pray that you will also guide us to do more and more each day. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Now, there are seven things I want to share with you now in helping you go through a life, walking this life, as a holy life and pleasing to God. How can you do it more and more? How can you get to that stage, letting go of the worldly immorality and living a moral life that Christ Jesus came to give you, to set you free? And the first one is reading your Bible. Now, the Bible is actually there to get to know God more, to seek God. So, And I know the Bible is not the only um place where you can find God. There are many other places, but that is a reference point because that's the way he communicates with us, which brings me to the second point, which is prayer. God wants to communicate with us. It's a relationship, so we have to talk to him. 
He has to talk to us. We must be able to open our ears and listen to what he wants to tell us. And then, what is your perspective? It's the third one. Your perspective on the world. Because if you have a worldly perspective, you, kind of, you are going to perceive God from a worldly perspective. But if your perspective is through the eyes of Jesus Christ and through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, your perspective of the world will change. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that they who believe might live and have eternal life. So it's all about perspective. So then also set an ex the fourth one is set an example for your friends. Your friends are the people that you, you live with, that surrounds you in the same context as you. So you surround yourself with the people that mainly think the way you think. But what about people outside of that circle? They also can become friends if you open up to them and they to you by setting an example. So it's actually, you have to live your life with your friends in such a manner that other people will want to join in. And then the fifth one is time. How do you give your time? What do you do with time? We all have 24 hours in a day. So what do you do with that 24 hours? How do you spend it? Do you just not think about it and let the time pass? Or do you actually live it so that what you do and how you live portrays a holy life pleasing to God? The sixth one is thoughts. Our thoughts can tend to be so negative, especially in times that, like we are in right now with the COVID lockdowns and stuff like that. So how can your thoughts be turned around into something positive and sharing with those around you? 2 Corinthians 5 says you have to take your thoughts captive and make, it, make them obedient to Christ. Um, otherwise your thoughts will take you captive. And then the last one, the seventh one, and there are plenty more. These are only seven that, that um, I want to share with you today. The last one is words. How do you speak and what do you say um, to people and those around you to embrace the holiness in God, to embrace your walking with God as Enoch did, that friendship with God, and of course, all of these seven, seven things is done through Jesus Christ who comes to share with, with us that path, that walkway, that friendship with God. So may you be blessed by the love of Jesus Christ our Lord, by the grace of our Father and the power of the Holy Spirit within us. May you live a blessed life, a life of holiness and a life of sanctification pleasing God. Amen. Amazing grace How sweet the sound That saved the rest like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see
Unending love. 